Hi guys. Uh, before we get started, I'm going to be at the woodworking show in Atlanta this coming weekend, which is March 15th, 16th, and 17th. I'll be there. Izzy Swan will be there. There'll be a bunch of other YouTubers and woodworkers. I'm kind of hanging out. Hope to see you there. Just Google the woodworking shows and check the schedule and you can see where it is and ticketing information, all that good stuff. Now, what are we doing in the shop? I've been working on some mobile bases. I'm lucky enough to have a dedicated workshop here and I got another one over at Mustache Mike's place. So I don't have to share space with the wife's car and the kid's pogo stick or stick balls or whatever it is today's youth are into. I know it involves some kind of sticks. Anyway, I don't move my machines all the time like some of you suckers who have families and people who love you. But when I do move things, I like them to roll because, believe it or not, I'm not as ripped in real life as I appear to be on camera. In the past, I've had kind of a mishmash of some mobile bases, and some have worked better than others. Some are just crappy. I don't know why it is so hard for companies to get this right. It's just a frame with wheels on it that has to hold a half a ton, has to adjust in size, uh, roll over saw this easily, but also it has to lock a machine firmly in place. I don't want it to wobble when I use it. How hard can this be? So I've been going through and replacing my crappy mobile bases with some better quality ones. And I've also been adding some mobile bases to machines that never had them before that I used to have to drag across the shop when I move things around. And it got me wondering, which machines do you folks have mobile bases on? So here's what I have. I keep my jointer on wheels so I can pull it out to work on larger socks. Same thing with my drum sander. I find that most boards that I run through these machines are like four feet long or less because that's as long as most furniture parts are. It's okay to kind of tuck these into tight spaces, but I want the ability to pull them out into the open if I need more in-feed and out-feed room. What about the drill press? In the past, I never put my drill press on a mobile base, but it seems like I'm always dragging that thing across the floor like a body I just pulled out of the freezer. And my new drill press weighs 11 billion pounds. I saw that on the box, I think. So I'm going to need some wheels on that sucker. Now, interestingly, Nova says in their manual, don't put a mobile base underneath this. And I don't know, I can't figure out why, because it's plenty stable. I think maybe it's because they don't want you putting it on a cheap, flimsy thing and then tipping it over on top of you like a cow on a moonlit high school night. You don't have to teach me that lesson twice. So I got the PM3500 mobile base that's rated, I think, at 11 zillion pounds. And I'm no math whiz, but I think I should be pretty good. And I find it is not tippy at all on that mobile base. By the way, if you don't live in the Midwest, you probably are wondering what the heck that cow tipping reference was all about. So let me explain it to you real quick. If you push a cow partway over, you get what's called lean beef. Now that is a rare feat, well done. But you really should knock that poor thing the rest of the way over because that is how we get ground beef. The table saw I have came with a mobile base, so I lucked out there. But my outfeed cabinet is super heavy. It's also super large. Finding a mobile base to fit around it is harder than finding a belt to fit around me. So I got a hold of Portimate and I found out they make extra long heavy steel rails for their heavy duty mobile bases. They even make couplers, so you can put more than one rail together. Theoretically, you could put your whole workshop on a mobile base this way. Well, it turns out I only needed the one set of extra long rails for this cabinet, and it worked out just fine. This thing came with some challenges, though, because I hadn't accounted for the edges of the mobile base when I built the cabinet. The door went all the way to the floor, for example, and it wouldn't have been able to open, so I had to take the door right off the hinges. Didn't bother me at all. Door slowed me down. To accommodate the drawers, I had to extend the base a little wide and then install some spacers so that the cabinet was centered and then the drawer front on the bottom could clear between the wheels. Then I ran into another problem. The top of my cabinet was now higher than the bottom of my miter slots on the saw. My solution, of course, was the obvious one. You hack an inch off the bottom of the sucker. But I couldn't find my chainsaw, so we decided to put some shims underneath the table saw between it and the mobile base. Believe it or not, lifting a 700 pound saw once it's already on the base is a lot easier when you have long rails like this, sort of like an oversized wheelbarrow that gives you a hernia. It's just another example of how all of life's problems can be solved with brute force. So it got me thinking about my lathe. Do I dare put a mobile base on that thing? Some people say no, 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 because a lathe has to be really, really heavy to dampen the vibration. So you should be trying to figure out how to weigh it down more 
not how to make it easier to move. But other people say yes, because the simple fact is they need mobility in their workshops. So here's what I did. I took a heavy mobile base, and this by itself is like 40 pounds, I think. I bored some holes in the bottom, then I flipped the lathe upside down and I bolted the base right to the lathe's feet. Yes, I felt like it was necessary to flip a 500 pound lathe to do this. Don't question my process. With a little help from the chick who runs the camera, I got it back upright. By the way, do not do this with a crappy mobile base. You're gonna bend or break your casters while you're tipping all that weight back up on them. Don't ask me how I know that. I chose this base specifically because it has four swivel wheels. That's actually unique. I, it had, you don't see a lot of mobile bases like that. Why does that matter to me? Because not only does it make it easier to move around, but when I lock it in place, all four wheels are lifted off the ground, eliminating the movement that you might otherwise get from the rear wheels remaining on the ground, as is the case with most mobile bases. There is, though, still some movement because those little rubber feet that flex, but I don't know, it seems like less to me. My idea was to put a piece of plywood on top of the mobile base beneath the lathe and then put some cement or sandbags on top of that, then build a cabinet on top of that. By tying everything together onto the mobile base, I hope to add three or 400 pounds of extra weight to help dampen vibration while also keeping it mobile. And I think it was a decent strategy, but as with everything in life, it comes with some compromises. The biggest thing is I can't stand as close to the machine because the mobile base gets in the way and my toes hit it. It's subtle, but you have to extend your arms a bit more. And I'm pretty sure it would be less comfortable for someone who turned a lot, especially bull tuners who like to get closer to their lathes. Then I got an ad in the email and it had a photo of this guy in it. He used a mobile base caster kit and some wood to make a base with a single stretcher that left room for his toes. I thought that was a great idea, so I emailed him and had him send me some extra pictures. Again though, this requires a little bit of compromise. You may have great mobility and you can get as close to your lathe as you need to do, but a wooden base like this isn't going to carry as much weight as a steel one. The wheels say 400 pounds. That is enough for a lot of lathes, but you won't be able to add two, 300 pounds of extra weight to the base to dampen the vibration. If you want to do that, you're going to need a heavy duty steel base and maybe some shorter toes. So I put my lathe back on the floor and frankly, I might just bolt it to the cement, sort of the opposite of a mobile base. But I'm still going to build that storage cabinet. That is coming in a future video. For now, it's time to sit back and have yourself a cold one because you were it, my friend. See you in Atlanta. Who says you can't get track saw quality cuts from a simple circular saw? Bora Tools' new WTX clamp edge guide system is light, it's easily portable, and it's far less expensive. And with the optional router and jigsaw attachments, the system's more versatile too. Check it out at the link in the notes below this video. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.